Please welcome Tracy Wilson. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to day two. I hope you had a fantastic day yesterday, learning, making friends, having some fun. What a day. Well, this morning's session will showcase a diverse set of customers who have taken advantage of SolidWorks and the 3D Experience Works to transform their businesses. And first, let's get started with a deeper dive into some of the SolidWorks capabilities that you heard about yesterday. So to get us started, please welcome SolidWorks CEO, Manish Kumar. Good morning, Dallas. Welcome back again. I'm sure you are having, you're, you're learning, you're exploring, you're networking. But you know what? Tonight we are all going to add fun in that mix. You may have heard the rumors. Tonight, there is a dance competition. There is a dance off between SolidWorks product management team and SolidWorks product definition team. And Eric Betty has promised to be there to be the judge, right? <laughs> but what they didn't know was even I'm going to compete in that dance off. You want to see some moves? <laughs> OK. This is how R&D dances, by the way, so please don't judge me, okay? So I was inspired by uh, Michael Jackson, of course. So is, how is this? Maybe, or maybe not, maybe not, it's fine. <laughs> I'll not try. <laughs> I'll, I'll be with, <laughs> I'll be the judge. Okay, I hope to see you all tonight. We'll have fun. To help you transform your businesses from delivering products to delivering experiences, we have scheduled three insightful sessions, which are hour long, later today. Please join us. But for now, I'm going to focus on the transformation we are all going through, knowingly or unknowingly. Photos and cameras. Everyone likes them, right? They take us back in time. They preserve our memories. But it took Bastion yesterday the, the images that you saw, it took him a couple of weeks in order to extract, in, in order to retrieve those memories. It is a very common struggle for a lot of us, right? Not the younger folks, but a lot of us. But retrieving the digital memories of my kids playing their sports took me seconds. And I wondered why and how. So if we go back in time, our memories were shaped by the limitations of film cameras the cost of each shot, and the all or nothing nature of the photo development. Memories were often lost in drawers, only to be stumbled upon by chance. Look at what I found, a photo of me with my beautiful grandma. And yes, this is how I will look with longer hairs, though you will never see that. I, I promise you will never see that. Bottom line, zero organization, lost jewels, this was our reality. But then the digital era happened. It revolutionized the photography. We embraced the freedom of taking as many photos as we wanted, editing them, organizing them with folders on our computers, right? Yet organizing photos was not simple. It remained challenging. Even with my meticulous folder system that evolved over years, finding photos that I wanted to find was impossible. It was difficult. And despite all the precautions, the risk of data loss loomed large. I bought a second-hand machine on eBay, kept it in my basement, and I backed up all my photos on that machine. But what if there was a power surge which could have fried both my laptop and that machine at the same time? Or flooding in the basement, for that matter? A very upset wife, right? <laughs> So essentially, I was fighting to keep my data safe, searchable, reusable, and I was failing miserably. And I'm sure it's not just me. A lot of you have faced the same exact problem, right? The era of smart devices that brought another seismic shift. Now everyone carries a camera leading to explosion of data. And organizing this vast amount of information, it seemed impossible for me. So you know what? I gave up organizing it. I gave up trying to organize it. 
And by doing that, my life transformed. Let me show you how. Doing nothing, I can splurge myself the cuteness galore by effortlessly going back to the time when my daughters were babies. Advantage of big data and next search with option to sort based on different criteria. Then AI stepped in. Pictures know where it, it was taken. AI knows who is in the picture. And with that, I can search for people at places. For example, in this case, John Paul in my village in northern India with my mom and dad, experiencing real India and driving a tractor like a pro. So you can imagine the GP, when he retires, he's going to go for a sugarcane factory, right? <laughs> AI automatically even categorizes similar images, and I can see all color photos without doing, all my fall color photos without doing anything. I can still categorize and create structured data, by the way, namely albums. It facilitates easy share of bunch of photos all at once. With anywhere, with anyone, anywhere in the world. You know what? I can use same images in two different folders without duplicating the data, without duplicating the data. So the need to preserve the precious moments of our lives have gone through a transformation from discarded organization and futile attempts to preserve the data to safe, secure, automated organization in the digital age. What was the result? Result was freedom, result was peace of mind. That's what it gave us. And 3D Experience Platform is meant to deliver the same exact experience to you. Freedom from handling complex interconnected data. You don't just create photos, right? You need freedom from data organization. You need freedom from thinking about safety, security, backup, location where data is getting access from, devices. We deliver AI-driven organization of your data allowing you to focus on what, it, what truly matters for you, which is innovation. And that's why today SolidWorks comes with only two flavors, with the platform, on the platform, to provide you with that freedom. Now, Proteus Motion is one of the pioneers who embraced this vision early on. Please welcome Paul Vizio on stage to get some insights from him. Paul. Hey, Manish, how are you doing today? Thanks for having me. Uh, good. Uh, so tell us about Proteus Motion. Yeah, so Proteus Motion is a sports science lab in a box. It produces in five minutes what it takes 20 pieces of equipment and three hours in a traditional lab. Our software offers standardized or customizable tests for any movement, providing progress, areas of imbalance, and hyper-specific program recommendations. Our patented three-dimensional resistance feels like training underwater. And you were the first 3D Experience SolidWorks customers, right? Yep. Uh, how did you make that decision? So in 2020, our search for the ideal design software led us to purchase 3D Experience SolidWorks. Our requirements included effective data management, affordability, up-to-date versions, and support for our remote team. Despite exploring various vendors and facing the challenges of COVID-19 in New York City, uh, also with office closures, we found our solution in 3D Experience SolidWorks. At that time, it hadn't launched yet, but its cloud-based capabilities perfectly met our needs for powerful CAD, data, data management, and collaboration. Impressed by its potential, we committed to 3D Experience SolidWorks and merged it seamlessly into our design processes. Now, being the first, uh, how was your experience? Was it flawless? Well, I don't know if you want me to tell everybody here, but we did have some hiccups. Okay, please, <laughs> please go ahead. So adopting the 3D Experience platform had its initial challenges due to its extensive features beyond CAD. We navigated a learning curve, understanding its full capabilities, data management, and new features like automatic updates. Despite our initial frustrations, close collaboration with the SolidWorks team and all you guys, it helped us quickly resolve issues leading to a successful integration. Uh, thank you for going through the growth pains with us. Now, looking back, was it worth the investment? Uh, was it worth it? Uh, yes, absolutely. So now we're in 400 locations in the US and Canada, serving a wide range of clients, including professional and college teams and athletes, which includes Super Bowl MVP Patrick Mahomes. Uh, we're also in commercial fitness, sports performance, physical therapy, and chiropractic facilities. 
Okay, and uh, with your data on the platform, do you have to struggle like I did with my photos, or is, is your life better? Yeah, much better now. Uh, so all of our machine configurations, uh, all of our unique and all of our standard parts is about 1,500 of them in total. We manage every single one of those on the 3D Experience platform. So what we do is we typically know the name of the top level assembly, so we'll start there, and then we'll explore the structure of the assembly and navigate to the desired components we're looking for. So just like you, I stopped creating folders a long time ago. Awesome, beautiful. <laughs> now, three years later, uh, do you have any interesting stories to share? So I do have many, but here is, uh, here's a good one. So <clears throat> when Giacomo, who's sitting out there somewhere, he might have ran in with a bunch of you guys, he came into the office one day and he forgot his laptop. He initially panicked, he was fearing a lost work day. However, he quickly used another office computer to access the platform. He downloaded SolidWorks and logged in. Within 15 minutes, he resumed his CAD work, accessing all of his up-to-date up files seamlessly. Power of platform and cloud, right? Yeah. Now, one um, last question. I, uh, talking to you, uh, you mentioned something like you are a universal receiver. Does it mean you are AB positive? So, no, I didn't mean I was AB positive. Uh, what I meant is that we work with many suppliers and manufacturers, and often they send us CAD files using older versions of SolidWorks. For us, since we're using 3D Experience SolidWorks, we're always using the latest version. So for us, we could always open and receive all the files they send us of the older files. Uh, so we are universal receivers. <laughs> Glad to know that. Uh, and uh, tonight, actually, in an hour, you'll learn that you'll also become a universal donor. Because starting with SolidWorks 2024 and 3D Experience SolidWorks, which is always up to date, we allow backward compatibility with up to two versions. You will hear about it and many more such enhancements in the future of design session later today. Thank you so much for sharing your interesting <laughs> stories, Thanks, Paul. Manish. Have a good one. See Bye you around. <laughs> now, as promised yesterday, let me try to dive deeper into AI. AI is here to make your life easier. We have already delivered AI-powered assistance to you in past, mate helper, sketch helper, selection helper, this helper, that helper, okay? We have more for you, okay? Now, when I started in 1998, there were few commands in SolidWorks. Today, we have thousands of commands in SolidWorks. Do you spend time switching between menus, tabs, trying to find commands? How about we give to you an AI-driven self-driving mode of SolidWorks, where you can predict what command you may want to use, where you don't have to spend any more time on finding commands. It simplifies the experience for you even more. You know what? My team is calling it command prediction. I don't like the term. I'm calling it SolidWorks self-driving mode. Our intention <laughs> is to make it irresistible and a very smooth design experience for you. You are always in full control, by the way, and you can use your regular commands anytime you like. Now, has it ever happened to you where you were looking for some inspiration and you saw something, you got inspired, you took pictures, then you painstakingly traced that picture, or traced a sketch on top of that picture? And this is where our next AI-driven image to sketch capability will help you to go from idea to delivering experiences faster. This is also in the category of AI providing assistance. It helps you save time and makes you more productive, especially during the ideation phase. Now, the bike demo that you saw yesterday, the furniture demo that you saw yesterday, they are example of generative AI. They are not assistive AI, they are generative AI. Generate, they generate ideas based on the knowledge of the past. And we are working on many more such examples. Let me show you two examples. Now, the first example was shown by Bernard yesterday. Let me try to go inside. In Home by Me, users have created millions of virtual twins of their homes, and they have shared it with us. So we are able to leverage publicly shared projects images, annotated scenes, and point cloud data to design our AI technology. And we are already able to use it to generate accurate virtual twins of a house when you simply scan using mobile devices. We are even able to generate new furni furnishing proposals for a given room based on the size of the room. Or based on the user's preferences, we are able to generate multiple styling ideas to choose from. And this is done to provide users with AI-generated choices and give them many more ideas and help them live a more fulfilling life. 
Now, drawings are driven by standards and well understood manufacturing needs. Using this available, open available information, we are working to provide you with AI-driven generative drawings. You simply ask the system to generate a drawing for you for a given model, and it will get created and saved on the platform. Since it is already on the platform, you get to see it from anywhere, from any device. But of course, you can go back to this drawing and make any manual modification that you may want. It will help you save precious time, but you will still be the final authority. We view generative AI as a productivity booster to help you focus more on what you want, which is innovation. Now you have a lot of data that can reveal things for you, things about your business. Are you extracting the full value of the data, that hidden knowledge? And even here, we can help you. Let me show you how. Imagine, for this example, you are a car manufacturing company with many different models. What do you need to know? You may want to know your business. You want to, uh, and uh, we are trying to show you what kind of uh, suppliers are there. What materials do I use today? How can I predict the price of this, those models over time? Now, AI is helping us to answer these questions for you. At times, life throws curveballs at you, right? What if you want to do risk analysis to run some unforeseen situations to understand how it will impact your business? So for example, in this case, if aluminum prices increases for some reason, whatever, how will it affect the bottom line? You can gain the, that insight with a simple what-if analysis and see the result in real times. Such cost increases can be deadly for a business. We help you get a deeper and factual understanding of such risks. In order to mitigate risks, you need to understand which one of your product is going to be impacted, by the, mo impacted the most because of those changes. You must be aware of that. We are able to help you achieve that. Can you identify the components which might be the culprit that will eat up your profit? With this knowledge, what corrective actions can your business take? It is almost like finding a needle in the haystack. Can you find alternative parts? or alternative suppliers, for that matter. We don't just help you find the needle in the haystack. We use AI to help you identify the right action that you must take. I'm sure you would agree with me that it is not just about cars. Each one of you have data that can provide you with answers to questions like these, and many others. It is made possible by consolidated data on 3D Experience platform. 3D Experience platform, it's not just a design and innovation platform. Rather, it is a truly business platform. And with all the brands of Dassault Systems, we are here to help you deliver the future. Because believe it or not, future is now. With that, thank you, and see you in the design session. Thank you, Manish. Thank you. There's a lot of really exciting AI tools to look forward to. And congratulations again to Proteus Motion on all your continued success. Well, now let's hear from another customer who has expanded their use of SolidWorks to grow their business and is now leveraging those solutions to better serve the environment. Please welcome 3D Experience Works Global Partner Sales Manager Catherine Norman and Vice President Global Engineering FlowServe Corporation Rob Phillips. Good morning, Rob. Um, I know you've been at World quite a few times, but it's great to see you up here on main stage to tell us more about FlowServe. Well, thanks, Catherine. It's, it's exciting to be up here, it really is. So let me just start out and tell you a little bit about what FlowServe is, who we are. You know, so we are a, a manufacturer of flow control systems. That's basically pumps, valves, seals. Uh, and our customers are people who need to move fluid around, so talk about power companies, uh, oil and gas companies, chemical companies, things like that. Anywhere where you need to move fluid from point A to point B in large volumes, that's where we get involved. So, you know, um, Flosser is a global company. We have facilities all over the world, and our products are, for the most part, they're custom engineered products for our, whatever the specifications are that our customers have. So for that reason, we have a lot of engineers around the world. So we've got about 2,000 engineers around the world. So 
Rob, we met, was it July of 2018? It was right before FlowServe was about to embark on this huge CAD standardization project. Can you tell us all what triggered that initiative? Yeah, so we, we were looking at a FlowServe as a company. We've been around a long time. We've been around for about 230 years. So we started back in 1790 when Thomas Simpson started making steam engines back in London. And through the years, we've grown a lot through acquisition. And over the last 25 years especially, we've grown a lot through acquisition. And every time we acquired a company, they brought with them their own tools, their own workflows, their own processes. And FlowServe decided that we needed to get the benefit of the synergies of all the companies that we'd acquired. And for that reason, we wanted to start developing enterprise tools. And among those enterprise tools were CAD tools. So we decided we wanted to standardize on our CAD tools. We had a myriad of different CAD tools that we were using at the time. So the idea was to, to standardize, and we took a look at the main CAD tools that we had. We had about four of the major CAD tools going on, so we decided to do an assessment of those. And of course, SolidWorks was one of those. Oh, I remember. It was a very detailed evaluation. But you had to make the right decision for FlowServe. If I remember correctly, I think you put together a team of over 100 subject matter experts across multiple divisions globally. Well, it wasn't quite that. It was 99 experts. We had 99 subject matter experts that we used. But basically, we were looking at, we wanted to make sure we made the right decision for the company, right? We wanted to make an informed decision. So we brought together our technical experts, and we, we uh, included people. Most of what we do is mechanical design. So we looked at our mechanical design experts, but we also brought in piping experts, the guys that do NC programming, our uh, FEA, CFD specialists, our supply chain people who work with the casting vendors, all of those different areas to make sure that we got all the right voices in the room. We put together 37 different case studies to do technical evaluations of the tools we were looking at. Uh, but in addition to looking at the technical capabilities of the tool, we wanted to make sure we had a good partner. You know, we, we have a global footprint, I already mentioned that, so we wanted to make sure that who we worked with also had a global footprint, a global network that could support us. Uh, we wanted to make sure that the training was available there because we were going to have to do not only conversion to a new tool, but also conversion from 2D to 3D. So that was a big deal to us. And ultimately, we wanted a partner who was committed to growing in the future, developing new tools, just like we were. So we wanted somebody we could grow with. And through all of that, we selected SolidWorks. Well, we are very grateful that you chose us and that we built such a strong partnership between Dassault and FlowServe. So Rob, before we wrap up, can you tell us about this great strategy at FlowServe, specifically the 3Ds? Yeah, so the 3Ds, uh, and that's our growth strategy. That's how FlowServe plans to grow into the future. And it's uh, diversification, digitization, and decarbonization. Those are tough to say. So diversification is just what it sounds like, right? That's diversifying the markets, the industries that we serve. Um, when you get into uh, digitization, there's really two prongs to that. There's an internal prong, which is basically FlowServe looking at our internal tools and setting up the IT infrastructure to support the digital thread across the organization. And when you're talking about digital thread, 3D CAD becomes important, model-based definition becomes important, and those are things where SolidWorks enables us. When you look externally with uh, digitization, then we're talking about the IoT tools that we use. So FlowServe has a large install base. We've been around 230 years, huge installed base of rotating equipment out there with our customers. So one of the things we want to make sure we're focused on is we're using IoT, and we, we brand that as Red Raven, but we're using that to instrument and monitor our equipment out in the field to make sure that we're optimizing its performance, its reliability. And when you start to do stuff like that, so digital twins become important. And again, that's somewhere where SolidWorks is an enabler for us. And then the last one is decarbonization. And that's really where things get fun from an engineering perspective. That's where we're working with our customers, and we're trying to help them with their efforts for a decarbonization, to reduce their carbon footprint, and also working with renewable energy companies, emerging markets that are coming out there. And I'll just talk about two companies or two types of industries we're getting into. Uh, one of them is concentrated solar power. So with concentrated solar power, you take an array of mirrors and you collect the sun's power and energy and you point it towards a single point. And with that, you get a lot of energy going to that single point. And with a lot of energy, you get a lot of heat. So you'll get up to maybe 1,200, 1,400 degrees Fahrenheit, pretty hot. And then you use something like molten salt as a heat storage fluid and a heat transfer fluid to carry that heat to where you need to be using it. And when you're trying to move something like uh, molten salt, that's very, very challenging because of the temperature and the corrosiveness of the fluid. So there, FlowServe is a, a world leader as far as the, uh, the pumps and the valves that work in molten salt. And that's at the high-end temperatures, right? We're talking about high-end temperatures there. So let's switch gears a little bit 
when you talk about low temperatures. So when we talk about the hydrogen economy, FlowServe has gotten in big into the, the filling stations for tractor trailers who are using hydrogen as their fuel source. And in that case, now you're trying to compress hydrogen, get it to a liquid form, so you're talking about 1,300, 13,000 PSI actually, where you're compressing that hydrogen, now you're getting down to minus 420 degrees F. You handle that fluid. So two very different challenges, but big challenges, and, and things that Flosser is very excited to be a part of moving forward with decarbonization. Wow, that's awesome, Rob. It's great to know that FlowServe has initiatives in place to, to support one of today's global priorities. Yeah, I mean, we're excited about it. We think it's a great opportunity for growth for us, and we're very happy to have SolidWorks as a partner going forward with that. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much to Catherine and Rob. Well, as you know, 3D Experience World can't happen without the help of some of our amazing sponsors. So now a word from longtime sponsor, HP. Achieve peak performance for your innovative product concepts, simulations, and visualizations. Develop models confidently on a workstation tested for hundreds of thousands of hours to meet your demands. Accelerate your design iterations with the latest NVIDIA graphics, supported by innovative thermal efficiency. Create on an ultra-crisp 4K display, then step into a virtual reality environment for collaboration and client reviews. Design with professional power in the office, at home, or on the go with space-saving desktops and lighter laptops that are built to expand with your work. Z's high-performance technology is trusted for every stage of your design process, from sketch to prototype. This is the next era of design. Z by HP. Thank you so much to HP. Well, our next series of customers have expanded their use of SolidWorks to include 3D experience work solutions to reimagine their futures. The first customer is here from Brazil to demonstrate how even within the business of heavy machinery, you can still lighten the load of operations and deployment. Pun intended. Please welcome Thiago Amarim, Design and Simulation Industry Process Consultant, Dasso Systems, and from BNS Solutions, Tomas Pinelli and Thiago Pinelli. Thank you. Hello, hello everyone. Tomas, Thiago, hello. welcome to the 3D Experience world, Thank my you. friends. So both of you, first timers here, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, and all right, like that, in the main stage of the general session, I'm afraid we're end up to spoiling you guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's see what comes next year. Yeah, let's see, let's see. <laughs> so you guys are from BNS, and for me, I think you represent very well the SolidWorks community in Brazil and the whole Latin America, because you basically design and manufacturing industrial equipment for automation. So we're talking about packaging machines, we're talking about a turnkey solutions for entire product lines, customized equipment, right? So what are the segments that you operate the most, and what makes an equipment a uh, BNS equipment with your soul and heart on that? Yeah, so BNS belongs to a group called TH. We do from civil engineering to industrial automation. So uh, BNS is specialized in end line machines like case packers, palletizers, flow packs, and conveyors. E many of our customers are from foods and beverages and pharmaceutical uh, sectors. Oh, that's amazing, that's amazing. And well, you guys have been using SolidWorks for many, many years, I think, right yeah, now. Eight right? years, eight to nine years, yeah. Okay, so what were the challenges or your business drivers that make you to think beyond CAD? Make you think now it's time to talk about data management, talk about uh, collaboration, PLM. What makes you go in that direction? Yes, from the people and technology perspective, in my opinion, we had three main issues. The first one, often our people from assembling and manufacturing are not using the latest version of our projects, and this generates costs, delays, and rework. The second point is about communication, because we have, have projects on different locations, whether in Brazil or internationally, and manage the communication between all personnel in these projects was a really nightmare. 
And the, the last one is about, we suffer with thin variation uh, as our number of projects grow or shrink and manage the technology infra infrastructure license, which is not good for us. Yeah, and from development and customer side, during our project flow, we have a specific moment where we do design reviews with the customer. So it was always a challenge since we have customers all over the world. So to do the design review with the customer doesn't use in the same tool as we. So with the platform, we are able to give them access just to see and also our team and our team on the assembly and manufacturing, they are able to see what we are doing even without the SOLIDWORKS installed on their machines. Yeah, I mean, I think most of us can relate with those challenges, right? Yep. Yes. And what makes you believe that the, the platform on cloud, the 3D experience platform on cloud, was the right path for you guys? What do you guys use the most for, from the 3D experience in your design daily business? Yeah, so to begin with, uh, regarding the, the process that we use, all our process from project development is inside the software nowadays. So we use the full uh, process inside the system, and that saves us time and saves us, for sure, uh, issues that we can have with not using the latest versions or things like that. Another thing, we, are, uh, we have a deep knowledge in SOLIDWORKS. So normally for us, we want a platform that smoothly integrates with the SOLIDWORKS. So this is what we do. And finally, our manufacturing and assembly team, they are using now uh, a digital system. They do not need paper to read the, the, the drawings and everything. So this saves us a lot of time and cost as well. Also, we not to need more worry about technological infrastructure, depreciation, obsolescence. And this allows us to focus on where really matter to us. It is design the solutions for the customer's needs. That's amazing. That's music from a year, guys. <laughs> and you know, at the so, uh, we operate not only developing our tools, our you know, our solutions, but also in the field with our business partners, our resellers, who play a fundamental role in supporting, implementing, expanding all our, our solutions all over the world. Actually, we have a lot of them here, mm -hmm. right, guys? So. You have chose CADWORKS Brazil as your reseller. Yep. Uh, how was the support of, from CADWORKS Brazil and from the Associations Latin American team for you to achieve your goals with the 3D experience? Yeah, so this is a very important question. So I saw the solution in Hanover Messi a few years ago, and then when I went back to Brazil, we started to try to understand how to use the platform and all the DASO solutions in our world. Uh, and we started taking a look on XApps, but then we brought CAD works together with us, and we see that this was not the, f the best path for us in that time. So they worked with us, they went to our facilities, they talked with our pro uh, engineers, manufacturing guys, and everybody, and worked with us to find the, be the best solution, the solution that fits best to us. And the same for uh, Dassault Systems Latin. We was uh, very good together, and this is a partnership that we believe for the future. That's amazing, that's what drives us. And to conclude, my friends, you have been SOLIDWORKS users for the last nine years, eight years, right? Uh, what did you like the most in our latest versions? And what do you expect from us from now to the future to keep supporting your crazy minds on beautiful ideas yeah. that you have on DNS? So the first one is the XApp. So we believe in that technology. We have a lot of engineers in the field. So having them making drawings and things like in a tablet, not necessarily in a workstation, that makes a lot of sense. And the second thing is regarding the marketplace. So as Tiago said, we normally grow and shrink a lot during the year. So having those guys being uh, working with us through the marketplace and enable us to, solve, to sell our solutions even through the network, that makes a lot of sense. That's amazing, guys. Thank you so much for being here with us. Have a great 3D Experience world. Thank and you. if anyone wants to know a little bit more about those guys' stories, don't forget to, don't let you buy them a cup of coffee or a beer in the park tonight. See you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. Thank you. I guess, I guess we'll see you all. We'll see you all later. All right. Well, moving on now from packaging automation machines to transportation of packaging, our next guest is reinventing how cargo is transported at mass scale across India. Please welcome Sri Krishna Chatur, go-to leader for 3D Experience Works Simulation Portfolio, and from Cargos, Alok Das and Pranav Shinde.
Good morning, everyone. No, I don't think you had your breakfast. How's everybody doing? No, one more time. How's everybody doing? There you go. My name is Sri Krishna Chitur, and I'm very excited to share some amazing, super cool, exciting simulation content, simulation sessions today. We're going to kick things off with Cargos. Thank you, Alok and Pranav, for joining us. Thank you, Sri Krishna. It's an honor to be on this stage. Good morning, Dallas. So uh, let's get started. Yeah, tell us about it's yourself. Tell us about Cargos. So I'm the co-founder of Cargos. Five years ago, it's an interesting thing that five years ago, we made the first sketch on SolidWorks. Life has come full circle as we introduce our first product to the world on this esteemed stage. It's an amazing experience. Thank you, Dosaw Systems. So Quargo's vision is advancing the world's transition to sustainable logistics. We are working on transportation solutions to make transportation more humane, simplifying the things that you do every day. Tell us a little bit more about your revolutionary vehicle. Purpose shapes engineering. Let me explain that. On the left-hand side, you see there are several vehicles which were designed originally for some specific application, whether it be off-road or commuting or maybe something like a sports bike. There are some commuter vehicles which are also being used for some form of logistics application, then they have got their inherent li limitations because of the design. On the right-hand side, there are purpose-built trucks, small trucks, which have been built for that. But there is nothing in between which can bridge the gap between the left and the right. And that's what exactly we are introducing today, compact logistics vehicle platform, first in the world, indigenously designed, a proprietary architecture which is having a very low center of gravity, which makes sure that the vehicle is stable in on form of applications with load or without load. A compact logistics vehicle for the world. All right. Explain us how this vehicle works. Uh, what are the key features? So we, we did about three years of research in six countries besides India. So we looked at the Middle East market, we looked at the Asian markets, and also the European market to understand that how people move goods on small vehicles. So we have got built 225 liters of space, 120 kgs of payload, lower center of gravity, 150 kilometers of range, and 80 kilometer per hour top speed. That's all combined together, and not that it. We also talk about building it as a technology platform with embedded sensors for crash detection, riding analytics, route optimization, and vehicle cargo and tracking. So it's a deep tech platform which can be leveraged with the power of hardware and software combining together. And your vision is making a platform that's versatile for various applications. Absolutely. Tell us more about it. So when we look at on the left-hand side, you can see the applications the way people do. That's not the humane and safe way of doing the things versus unlocking the potential of the product that we're introducing to the world today. It's got the power to do the customization to help businesses being more efficient in the transportation. All right. Tell us more about the DNA of Cargos and why did you choose 3D Experience Works to enable your innovation journey? So it's interesting, Sri Krishna, because it's the analysis first approach, whatever we do, we do analysis first, anything and everything. We would want to simulate that in the platform so that we know that we are doing a trout. It's all about the predictable execution. And that's where the unified modeling and simulation approach helped us build this particular product which is far more robust than any other similar architecture or any other architecture for the logistics application. It's built robust, it's built tough, and that's all because of the 3D experience works leveraging that. So this vehicle is completely built on 3D Experience platform. Absolutely. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, in fact, I want to share an interesting story. Last Thursday when we arrived here, uh, we were looking at uh, their package. Uh, and, and basically, the vehicle was completely disassembled with, with the frame and, and everything you know, in a, in a nice-looking uh, frame. And I started wondering, you know, guys, this does not look like something that, that you just purchased. 
um, and they gave an interesting response. Pranav, do you want to tell us about it? Yeah, sure, Krishna. So uh, we don't just do simulations on the vehicle. <laughs> so when we decided to pack it and ship it across India to US, we were concerned about the safety of the cargo, right? It's delicate, it's meaning we don't want to break anything inside it. So when then we did build the structure, we did the simulations on it, and then wow. we were uh, having a peace of mind that yeah, it will now go very comfortably and reach US. And it did reach very good. Meaning yes. when we opened it, it was you know intact. Yeah, even yes. though it looks like something a startup would put together, <laughs> it was very robust. Yes. All right, uh, I just want to uh, close off with a couple of questions. Uh, look, what excites you the most about 3D Experience World? So this lo does not look like a conference. This looks like a rock concert. I'm very excited Woo! for the electric <laughs> atmosphere that we have. Thank you so much. All right, this is probably my favorite um, discussion of all. For now, 11 years ago, you were at Lincoln, Nebraska, yes. participating as a student, as a fan of SolidWorks at the Formula One, uh, Formula SAE. Yes. And 11 years from now, you're leading the vehicle integration at Cargos, and you're here at 3D Experience World, yep. launching the world's first CLV. Yep. Tell us about this amazing journey. So, well, back then I used SolidWorks to you know, build up the vehicle. Uh, you know, great tool, uh, very nice. But today, when we are building up the entire you know, pl Cargos platform, we don't just need CAD, we need simulations. We need the electromagnetics, we need aerodynamics. Uh, we need a lot of project management to be done to have um, you know, seamless uh, communication with the, across the teams. Uh, and 3D experience works have you know, accelerated the product development in a super fast way. So that is most exciting part for me to work with Quagos. All right, excellent. Thank you so much. Big round of applause for these gentlemen. Thank you. And we are going to be launching their vehicle at 1.15 p.m in Simulation Without Limits, which is the domain session this afternoon at Reseller Plenary Room. Please join us. Thank you all for your time. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. All right, we we'll take this. You got it, cool, cool. Thank you, all right. Congratulations on that launch. Really, really fantastic. And if anyone is interested in learning more, like you said, if you want to learn more about Cargos, uh, please come to the Simulation Domain session that is at 1.15 p.m. in Hall A. And you can also stop by the Dassault Systems booth in the playground, and you can actually see it if you haven't been to the playground yet. It's a, it's a great opportunity to get your hands on it and see it in person. Well, our next guest is here to highlight the power of automation beyond manufacturing and how it can not just streamline workflow, but also drive efficiency and profitability. So please welcome Trevor Dio, R&D Vice President, Dummy Works, and Colin Goodow and Sherry McCandless from Tessie Plastics. Hi, everybody. I uh, never know what to do with my hands in these things. I, it's going to kind of flap around, and hopefully I don't distract everybody. Um, anyway, uh, hi, welcome. Uh, Colin and Sherry, Colin Goodale, the uh, Director of Information Services, and Sherry, uh, the Director of Finance for Tessie Plastics. I think a lot of people in the room have a picture of what you guys do for the company. But what does Tessie do? What, is Tessie, what makes te Tessie special? Well, Trevor, thanks for inviting us to come here today. Tessie Plastics is a plastics manufacturing specializing in plastics injection molding, uh, mainly focused on consumer and medical products. Um, if you ever wonder when you go home and look at those very little parts that, that you never know where it come from or whether you go to the doctor's offices, it's likely that we made them. Um, as our CEO would say, we make the small plastic parts better. Um, we've come to specialize in creating efficiencies with our products through automation. Um, one of the things about Tessie is we were founded in uh, 1973, and we just celebrated our 50th anniversary. Um, we're headquartered in central New York, uh, where we have offices in New York, Pennsylvania, uh, and Shanghai, China. Wow. Wow, that is actually a pretty truly global endeavor that you guys have been building and growing towards. And I really, what I really like about it is how ubiquitous your products are. Some of them may even be in the room with us right now. So what kinds of Dassault Systems products are you currently using? We use a complete, works of, a complete solid portfolio of SolidWorks um, for our engineering and R&D. And then we have the very comprehensive Delmia Works ERP system. Uh, these products help uh, our entire operation from design, engineering, to manufacturing, shipping, 
uh, and so much more. Yes, and for anyone here in finance, you know you need to rely on accurate information and data. At Tessie, we rely on Del Mealworks to give us the information we need to track our profitability, not only for our finished goods, but also for our engineering projects. So what I love about that and what you're doing with SolidWorks and Del Mealworks is you're treating a true virtual twin of your entire business from the shop floor to the top floor and engineering, everywhere in between. So when I started working with Tessie, like, wow, 15 years ago now, that's uh, a long time, really, wow. Um, <laughs> You were still growing at, a, or you were already growing at a rapid pace. Are you guys accelerating your growth? Yeah, as Colin mentioned, we have eight manufacturing plants worldwide, as well as a mold shop and automation business, where we automate is, uh, the assembly process of our customers' parts. Many of our customers come to us to make their processes more efficient. We currently have 1,600 employees globally. Some of our largest growth has been in the design and build division, and we are excited to encourage that growth. Oh man, that's awesome. That's really impressive, like seriously. I remember going out to your facilities and just how much it's grown since the time I've been there. I can't imagine what the future looks like. Now, as I'm sure you've, as you've grown and continue to grow, you use the soft, your use of the software has changed. How have you expanded your use of Dassault Systems products to enable that growth, Colin? So we have about 400 presses that are uh, in place um, that require the real-time process data monitoring for both production and process data. Um, it helps ensure the quality of our products, better material management, reducing scrap, as well as uh, getting products shipped on time. Yeah, and the general ledger is the home, the final home of every transaction from receiving to moving product to shipping it. Everything hits the GL. So my team is tasked with interpreting, reporting, and investigating what gets posted to the general ledger. That's from purchase orders, straight through invoicing, and every transaction affects our bottom line, as you all know. With Domeo Works, we can manage and we can analyze and track these effects so that management can make better business decisions. Wow, just wow. Truly leveraging that virtual twin of your business is letting you do a lot of cool things, truly run your business with intelligence and grow. Thank you all so much. Let's hear it for Tessie Plastics, Colin and Sherry, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Fantastic. Well, our final guest in this section also tackled manufacturing challenges, streaming the process from sales to delivery using the SolidWorks platform. Doesn't everyone wish you could just take an idea on paper and make it real, not just quickly, but also accurately? So let's take a look at how Viscon Group makes this happen. And then Michael Bookley, Partner Sales Manager, 3D Experience Works, and Tom Van Gilst, Business Information Manager from Viscon Group, will explain more. Continuously changing sectors. In vertical farming, hatchery automation, insect farming, reforestation, hydroponics, greenhouse growing, factory intelligence, and intralogistics. So, it's a pretty big crowd, right? We were talking yesterday. Pretty big, yeah. Yeah. So we're going to talk a little bit of uh, plant layout, factory flow, simulation, right? Yeah. So you guys have been using 3D Experience Works for the last three years, a little, yeah. almost four. Talk about that journey and, and how you started into that. Well, thanks for the question, Mike. Good morning, everyone. So a couple years ago, we as a company noticed that our clients were getting bigger. And the project that we were doing were also getting bigger. And with bigger projects, it's just almost impossible to do all of that in cuts. In gigantic layouts such as these, you just can't match with the details and it just crashes and you need supercomputers to make it work. So we decided to start looking at software that could actually help us with these large scale projects so that we could actually do the normal engineering in the layouts, in the software and have good performance so that all our engineers would still be happy working. And after a search, we found the 3D Experience platform. And now we're using the plant layout design app there to make our new layouts. And everyone is using it from the start. So we begin at the sales process. First, we did 2D cuts. 
Now it's changed to 3D as well. So all the, across the entire company, these 3D layouts, everyone is working in the same ecosystem. And this is helping us move forward a lot faster than we previously did. So when you talk about everybody using a platform, you talk a little bit about performance, what does that journey look like of transition? Because one day you're doing everything over here and now you're doing it enterprise wide. How does that process sort of look of how you get people to adopt it? Yeah, so uh, first of course we ran a pilot with a couple projects uh, and you start off with a small scale project and then you increase it basically. Uh, and after the pilot, we tested everything. So we, we did interviews with people, like what are you you're currently doing, what tasks are you performing? And after that, we made these task descriptions and we tested all of that throughout the software. And after this, it's basically determining who gets which license, which role, and you give the engineers and the sales engineers and the project managers, you give them the trainings and after that, it's just basically waiting for the first project to get ordered by our customers for the project to get into operation. And then, well, the magic basically unfolds itself. OK. That, that seems pretty simple. Uh, always. It always seems simple. <laughs> yeah. So when we were looking at this image the other day, it brought back memories of when I used to do this type of stuff. Um, can we talk a little bit about the value of seeing things in 3D and seeing this layout with the detail that's in it? Can you explain a little bit about some of the advantages you got from that? Yeah, sure. Uh, so the first thing is probably that in 2D, uh, you only see the top view. So anything where you have these conveyors going on angles, walking through each other basically, with still products going over them, it's often happened to us that there is a small miscalculation in height, for example. And uh, these sort of mistakes have just been well, greatly reduced with this new software because, as you can see, you don't need to uh, skip out of any, on any of the details. So you can still have, uh, you know, when you need to use high legs, low legs, when you need to build a platform. Um, additionally, all of these, uh, this equipment that you see, it's all parametric, and these param parameters are built in by our engineers, which has made it tough for our sales guys to offer stuff that we don't have in-house, which also helps reduce mistakes on that side. And all in all combined, it makes it so that these layouts have, uh, yeah, it's suitable for everyone. So we start at sales, we go to project office, PLC, software, electrical, everyone is using the same layout throughout all the way to the service department. Sales guys over promising. I don't think that ever happens, does it? No, not at our company. <laughs> no. Now, when we look at this image here, it was, it was sort of interesting. You and I were talking about this. Um, you, you were telling me that this is a fully detailed model. It's not yeah. dumbed down for sales or processing or anything else. Can you talk a little bit about the advantage of being able to use the platform for very large, complex components yeah. and assemblies? Yeah, so uh, for most of uh, the testing that we did with other software, it was always a requirement to basically have a separate library with simplified models to build these large scale layouts. And with this, it's uh, no longer necessary. So we actually use these engineering models straight from SolidWorks and we just put them in these, uh, in these plant layout designs. And it's like one on one and there is no performance issues with these large assemblies, even if you put in a point cloud or an entire BIM model with all the details. And this is what I get back from all the engineers is that the performance is amazing compared to what we've previously tried and used. So that helps, right? It saves a couple steps. Where yeah, you don't it have saves to manage time. All that. It takes steps, yeah. yeah. So as we look at what the future brings and what your next steps are to continue to evolve and, and be a leader in your space, what's your next steps and plans? So after uh, this, now we have the static layout for the plans. And this is the beauty of the platform. There's always more roles, more things you can discover and explore. And the next step for us is going to be simulation. So we want to actually be able to run all of this layout and actually simulate the real time uh, performance of it, find bottlenecks, help customers optimize their product flow throughout their facilities. And this is also possible, of course, for our service department with our existing customers. Yeah. So a lot more value add, a lot more control, bringing everyone into a single source of truth, right? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. So thank you so much. We're going to go back and talk more manufacturing. If you want to come see more about what we're doing and how these things work, please come by the shop floor in the playground. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, guys. Have a great day.
Thank you. Awesome. Thank all of you for sharing your transformation stories. Real world examples of how customers are extending the value of SolidWorks with 3D Experience Works. Well, our technical partners also play a key role in our customer success. So thank you, Lenovo, for your support of our customers, their journey, and of 3D Experience World. Let's take a look. Thank you so much, Lenovo. Thank you. Thank you. Well, our transformer, transformation journey continues with customers who are reimagining solutions to industry problems. So please welcome Vice President of Strategy and Community for 3D Experience Works, Sucha Chain. Good morning. How's everybody doing so far? So, GP and I got inspired by Manish's moonwalk on the stage earlier this morning. So, you know, we are throwing our hats in the ring for the design competition this evening. So bring it on. So our journey into the future of innovation continues. Building on yesterday's momentum, today we present more trailblazing companies whose work demonstrates the transformative power of the technology. So, so first up, we will have ND Addicts. ND Addicts is at the forefront of telemedicine, transforming healthcare with their remarkable PillBot, a robotic pill that is a virtual endoscope, providing an internal view of your body from the comfort of your home, CEO, of ND Addicts, Tori Smith, awaits a new addition to his family, so we are honored to have their head of manufacturing, Thomas Silva, here to share their design and product development. Thomas, come on over. By the way, Th Thomas wins the award of best looking guests, right? What do you guys think? You're too kind, you're too kind. So, Thomas, tell us about more about Pillbutt. So PillBot is the world's first virtual endoscope. Unfortunately today, every 39 seconds, someone around the world dies of stomach cancer. And early diagnosis is the best prevention method. The most commonly used diagnosis method today are EGDs. And some of you may have experience with this, but these are invasive, expensive procedures. They have long lead times. They can take up to months to get an appointment, require teams of medical staff, facilities, the list goes on. With PillBot, there are no hospitals, no drugs, and no wait times. And this is how it works. Let's go. So, I'm gonna prep this. So you, you, usually, somebody would be swallowing this pill, mm. but we're gonna use this here. Let's see. We, we were planning to swallow it earlier, but you know, uh, maybe, maybe not so much. Yes, do it. Yeah, Joe. Joe, come on up. <laughs> so, so. Actually, to Tori, who's not here, as I said, he's uh, awaiting his uh, uh, new, new, new baby. He w really wanted to do this on stage. Uh, he's not here, so we can't do it. Uh, but it's pretty amazing. We have seen this working. It's really, as I said, it's the virtual endoscope. Mm. Um, Thomas, how are we doing on this? Just one more try. N nearly there, nearly there. Nearly we were there. Uh, trying this yesterday, it should work. We wanted to make sure it's live. We might be having issues with the battery. Uh, let's, let's not worry about it, we can do the demo. Well, we do have a video on the slides okay. of the PillBot moving around. 
Uh, yep. Let's do this. One more try. Well, okay. the patients. Yeah, we, we in software industry know the demo demons, right? Whenever you show something live, it always happens, right? So it's not a big deal. Mm. We'll just give one more try. Otherwise, Thomas, you go there back. You go. Well, it seems that our batteries died. Okay, no, no so, problem. Let's, let's go back up. You guys, you guys get the point? So the patient could be at home or in a clinic, and all they need to do is drink a large cup of water and skip a meal. And then the doctor could be on the other side of the world or in the same room with the patient and will capture live images inside the patient's stomach, allowing them to perform their diagnosis. So, yeah, I mean, it's amazing. By the way, you guys notice how small this pill is. You got to swallow it. So, really, Thomas, that's a pretty, pretty big feat. How did you make it into such a small robot? So, we started off actually with a pretty big football-sized pool bot. And then SOLIDWORKS played a key role in the 90% reduction in size. PillBot is essentially a tiny remote control submarine. This 13 by 30 millimeter pill is jam packed with motors, a PCB, a camera, a lens, a battery, and countless other small components. So the challenge really was how do we get all these components in a small form factor while keeping a maneuverable robot? And I think there are two components that really exemplify how SOLIDWORKS played a key role in the design and manufacturing, the PCB and the lumens. Given the limited space, we decided to go with a flex circuit board. We started off with four islands. This holds all the electronic components, and we wrapped around the transceiver antenna around these islands, allowing the pillbot to communicate live footage from inside the stomach. We then have a complex arm that bends and curves to connectorize the battery, uh, the battery and the motors at the back of the robot. Not only did this uh, allow us to expedite the design and eventually manufacture the board, but it also expedited the communication between the mechanical engineers, allowing both design requirements and their engineering needs. The lumens are the tubes through which the motors and the propellers jet water through the robot, allowing it to move through the stomach. In order to move the robot efficiently, we wanted to maximize the flow, the flow through the lumens. Designing for small scale is challenging, as some of you may know. And designing, taking into account fluid dynamics, sets its own set of challenges. So this is where SOLIDWORKS flow simulation really came into play. It allowed us to quickly iterate through various combinations of propellers, lumens, and the relative position, saving us time, money, and costs. This is amazing. What do you guys think? Yeah? So, t Thomas, tell us uh, what, what is next for Andy Addicts? Well, the future is very exciting. Uh, soon we'll be developing PillBot 2. It will be a smaller, more efficient, and, 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 and more accessible version of the current robot. Beyond, we envision a future where PillBot is not only a passive viewer of the stomach, but also an active surgeon inside the human's body. We imagine going smaller, and I mean way smaller, with MEMS-like robots tackling brain tumors. And so really, our imagination is our limit, and the tools we have access to will allow us to realize these exciting future applications. Thank you, Thomas. This was amazing. Congratulations. Can't wait to see what you guys do next. Thank you. So next, we turn our attention to the streets in India with Tiguna, founded by our next guest, Abhijit Bansod. Now, Tiguna is revolutionizing the street retail with an electric tricycle that elevates the standards of mobility and visibility for street vendors. This innovation, born from Dassault Systems 3D Experience Lab, it's a frugal innovation community out there, showcases how human-centered designs can transform livelihoods and enhance the customer experience. So Abhijit, come on up. Thank you. Great to see you, Abhijit. How are nice you? Nice to see you. Thank you well, so much. Yeah. So it's really inspiring to learn about Tiguna. Tell us a little bit about more, what's behind the name, why Tiguna? So uh, Tiguna name is inspired times in Hindi. And we have 10 million street vendors in India. And we wanted to make a positive impact on their lives uh, three times. And it's kind of a catchy name, but I think we really believed our commitment to that name. And we wanted to make it uh, three times, you know, offer them three times business, three times mobility. 
three times safety because you know they use a very uh, contraptions you know uh, in in today uh, definitely three times comfort and above all i would put is three times pride in what they really do because that's something was missing you know uh, for a long long time for them yeah that's well, that, that is amazing. I grew up in India, so I know Thiguna means three times. I remember Duguna, which is two times, but you are going three times, so that's, of course, amazing. Now, tell us a little bit more about how, uh, you know, the design collaboration, which was very important for you, I, I, I know, when we talked earlier. So how does uh, SolidWorks 3D Experience Platform help you? Uh, yeah, so we had this really great challenge where we had to achieve uh, amazing efficiency and affordability, you know, and, and these are like two things don't really come together most often. Uh, and we wanted to sort of design this for Indian women street entrepreneurs who wear traditional saris. So we wanted to make it so safe and so comfortable that a lady entrepreneur could ride uh, and she may not have even a prior experience of riding the trike. Uh, hence, I think when we, uh, you know, I mean, we really thanks to, uh, you know, uh, 3D Experience Lab, where we started engaging and we wanted to really leverage the SolidWorks engineering simulation, where we could do material simulation, we could do dynamic simulation on Indian streets. And uh, Indian streets, I'm talking about village to big cities where you may have a street or you may not have a road, you may have a portal or may not have a road. Uh, all, all kind of a worst case scenarios for that. That really helped us, uh, and doing this entire simulation virtually uh, saved us a year of time for development. And that really brought us to the point where that we could really crash course the entire thing in a few months. And Yeah, it's amazing, and I've, I've seen this in action. A lot of you guys can see this at the partner pavilion in the, in the playground. So this has been very impressive. So really, what's next for you guys? Uh, we have, like, it's just the beginning, you know. I mean, we're just starting our journey. Uh, and we have, like, something, like a milestone we want to achieve is, you know, uh, we want to, it's very exciting and it's very ambitious for us to really reach that point. We, we want to focus on uh, increase our impact to reaching out to more vendors in different cities uh, at the same time. We want to bring the best of technology in, uh, I would say, appropriate technology for what is applicable to them, uh, and economy of scale to make it even more accessible and even more uh, uh, sort of you know affordable for the, to for the, the last mile delivery. Well, last thank you. Delivery. Thanks a lot, Abhijit. Thank you so much. Thanks for being thank here, so guys. Thank you. So we will wrap up today's session. Join us. Join me on day three as we unveil more pioneering products that are shaping the world. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much, Sujit. I was thinking three times, three times. It is like 10 times inspiring. What a day this has been. Fantastic. Thank you all for those inspiring stories. Well, we all know that innovation comes from all sorts of people and places. Our next speaker is reframing how the world views diversity, inclusion, and gender within engineering. A leader in product machining with three decades of experience, please welcome to the stage CEO and co-owner of Pioneer Service and m and Quality Grinding, Anissa Muthana. Good morning, Dallas. Good morning, fellow manufacturers and engineers. I am very honored to be speaking to you today. Thank you, Megan and Barbara, for having me. Who here has been in front of a presenter about DEI in the last, I would say, five years? Have you? Have you seen enough talk about DEI? Well, this session is a little different than most sessions about DEI. It's a perspective from a machine shop owner who's worked with a diverse team. My name is Anissa Mathenna, and I will be speaking about diversity, equity, and inclusion, DEI. My focus, empowerment without dividing. They have become buzzwords. You hear them all the time. Unfortunately, sometimes shallow words. 
but hopefully today you'll hear from my perspective and find a little bit of inspiration. But we know that we have made progress because the fact that I'm speaking to you today about the topic is a testament to that progress. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is as technical as it's going to get. Who here feels like the character on the right? Engineers, manufacturers, we have so much going on. Designing, processes, building, production, and then what about those metrics, on-time delivery and quality? Lots of going on. But DEI should not ever be presumed as a burden. It is a responsibility. But when you embrace it wholeheartedly and act sincerely towards those efforts, you will reap the benefits of any work you put in. Before I talk about what DEI is, let's talk about and address what DEI is not. It's not checking off a box or a political agenda. Unfortunately, it has become that. But we as leaders can make decisions while running our departments and our companies not to fall into that trap. It is not a trophy employee or a token board member. Success must be earned and never given. This is one of my favorites. It's not playing the victim. Playing the victim fosters a toxic environment. No one wants to work next to an entitled employee. It brings your culture down, and it becomes very difficult to make anyone understand why. You can't say to one employee, this employee can get away with it because of the color of their skin or because they, you just checked off a box. That's not fair. Only qualified employees. And if they're diverse, great. And if they're not, that's okay too. And it certainly isn't us versus them. You know, I hear people all the time saying that they value DEI and in the same breath condone and bash the old white guy. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. I have been in this industry my entire life. White males are my mentors, my mentees, and during IMTS, they're my shopping buddies because we love big machines. But seriously, if we want this to work, if any initiative for DEI should work, it will only work by empathy. And progress only happens when you get everyone's buy-in. It doesn't work that you bash a gender or a race. Villainizing the white male, yet expecting him to embrace change, is a recipe for failure. Let me say that again for the people in the back. Villainizing the white male, yet expecting him to embrace change, is a recipe for failure. It doesn't work. Ladies and gentlemen, that is not advocacy. That is hypocrisy. So what is DEI? DEI starts with diversity, and diversity means different things to different people. It could be your race, it could be your age, it could even be your educational level. But it's about hiring qualified individuals from a variety of backgrounds. Equity consists of your policies and practices in place. Ask yourself, are they fair and impartial? 
No one wants to be a charity case. Everyone deserves to be compensated fairly and provided opportunities to develop their skills. I'm going to give you a 20 later. <laughs> By the way, I had no idea I was going to match the background. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> so if I blend in, follow the shoes. <laughs> Inclusion, it's that warm and fuzzy feeling we get, right? The sense of belonging that we all yearn for. It's not walking on eggshells. We are humans. We're going to say the wrong thing. I'm here talking about DEI. I've said the wrong thing. I've made mistakes. I obviously have plenty of bad things said to me as well. But it's OK, especially with good intentions. We're learning. It's not walking on eggshells. It's respect. It's understanding. It's empathy. It's compassion. It's accommodating when necessary and respecting our differences. My motto, everyone has a place in manufacturing. Work hard, you, the company, and the industry will prosper together. Now this is not brain surgery. This basically DEI, before the acronym came out, what it means is, do the right thing. Treat people fairly. That's all. We don't have to make it complicated. But let me tell you, if your company values aren't aligned with this, more importantly, if your company values aren't aligned with your personal values, change them. If you can't change them, it is on you to find your plan B. So one group of diversity would be women. Look around you. There's not enough women in this room. When I go to events, especially back in the early 2000s and in the 90s, I was the only woman in the room. It still happens, but not as often. Women groups provide inspiration, mentorship, and resources to those that are new in the industry. These groups many times have male allies and male funding because they realize they want to tap into that group of people and they want to leave a legacy and help and empower the next generation of women to stay in the industry. There's plenty that come in, but they don't stay. These groups help them. And this is what I mean about not dividing, empowering without dividing. Because if a woman group starts bashing men, which in all honesty, there's sometimes that happens. It's on us women to walk out. Because that's not empowerment. So as a business leader, there's always, what's the return on investment? Well, with ROI, of DEI, besides doing the right thing, there's plenty. I actually wrote an article for Modern Machine Shop, and it lists several. Today, because we're short on time, I'll talk about two. Innovation is championed through diversity. Different perspectives, different ideas brings creativity to your team. Besides, if everyone on your team looks like you and comes from the same background as you, you haven't even scratched the surface of innovation. So we have a workforce crisis. In the workforce crisis, what better way than to promote the industry to those who may not be inclined to join? 
empowering those that are not even realizing and attracting them to come into the industry is a huge win for the workforce crisis that we're facing. It's not brain surgery. We need more people. I hope my perspective gave you a few takeaways. Don't let your company's values be pretty words on a wall or content for the website. Make sure they mean something to every single person on your team. It's okay to show off your team, especially if they're a diverse one. Not on a pedestal, but on social media and in events like these. Show off your team. Make them feel like they belong. So, supporting groups, mentorships, it's changed my life. I have individuals who I hired as interns in the early 2000s who are now engineers, business leaders, and even my accountant. And now they're mentoring me. Giving back and providing resources to groups is a win for us, just as much as it's a win for them. We are makers. We provide and touch lives worldwide. Use that same positive energy to attract, cultivate, and empower a diverse team, especially for the next generation, so we can leave a legacy, a legacy we are proud of. Thank you. Thanks. Before I get off oh, stage. Yeah, you got more? Okay. One more comment. Yes, please. Before I get off stage, we all know, on a personal level, we all know there's a lot of hatred and a lot of violence in the world today. I ask you to use the diversity factor that I just talked about in your careers and workplaces, in your personal life. Pray for the victims globally, everywhere, Africa, Asia, the Middle East, Ukraine. And please include people that don't look like you in your prayers. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Fantastic. Really incredible words, not just about how we can grow in business, but how we can grow as humans. So thank you for that, Anissa. Thank you really much, it was wonderful. Well, next up, it is act two of Splines Out. <laughs> Yesterday, we met the design team from MVP Corp who failed spectacularly in their soapbox derby race. We also met the world famous CAD detective, Renard Rouge, who has been brought in to aid their investigation. So get out your notepad, put on your thinking caps, and make your own guess at who done it after today's demos. Why is up everybody? Whoa! One million views overnight of the Extrudo Cup fails coverage? Chad thanks you all. I saw Ben Lofton commented, what's up with the Extrudo stock price this morning? Up 10%? There goes all shorts. Well, Ben, that's the power of social media and that's the power of Chad. What's bad for MVP Corp might be good for Extrudo. Just take a look at those tickers. And now, Elk, would you be able to use some of those fine solid work skills you're always talking about to help us investigate further? Sure, no problem, Rhaegar. That red herring bearing just doesn't make sense. Further proof that I'm being set up. And if someone has tampered with our car, it will definitely show up in the assembly drawing. Oh, dangling dimensions? Hmm, well, maybe a quick reload. SOLIDWORKS 2025 now offers the ability to reload a drawing document, just like with part and assembly files. Okay, but that didn't solve these danglers. With 2025, this is no problem. You can highlight any dangling dimension and use the new 
automatic repair tool to reattach. This also works for sketches as well. Hmm, maybe this detail view will have some clues. Yes, yes, this is interesting. A display state for a red herring bearing? There it is. Are these bearings reported in the bomb? Hmm, let me check the reference configuration. No, this is wrong. No wonder we didn't see it before. Someone has definitely been tampering with this. Check this out, Bernard. In 2025, you can now filter and organize your bill of materials by configuration and display states. As great as that capability is, this drawing smells really fishy to me. So there are design changes by Eric, uh, like a validation by Andy, and, and a drastic update to the product structure by Mike. Suspicious quite, but do any of these constitute intentional sabotage? Who's ready to really ramp up this lunch and learn? Extruda just released its holiday surplus bombogranate. I've got quantities. <sighs> Anything but weld mint. Ugh. Bombogranate? Mm, I suppose. Listen, Mike, adding that red herring bearing, you know, that's one thing. Haha, -ha, right? But modifying the frame, that could have easily caused our crash. Yeah, and I definitely didn't run sim on that. Uh, you know, Mike, I think now is a good time for us to take a look at your bomb. Uh, care to defuse this? <sighs> Listen, Eric, you didn't use my part numbering, nor did you pull out any of my custom properties. <sighs> I definitely modified some of the metadata, but I never touched your geometry. Well, here's a chance for you to prove your innocence. Let me take you back through what I did. Eric had submitted an update to his front-end design. We were all super busy with tasks, but the chassis was a priority, so I reviewed it first. Inside the task, the updated revision was attached as a deliverable. And honestly, after reviewing the chassis, it looked spot on. I even added a comment for Eric telling him my feelings. As a manager, I know his ego needs those boosts to stay motivated. I moved the task to 75%, and he still needed to provide the updated simulation results. But I did freeze the frame to make sure no further CAD changes could be made. The two other tasks I tackled that day shouldn't have affected the structure or caused the crash. Part numbers needed to be generated for a bunch of items, and the vendor information for the wheels also had to be changed out, since I guess we were making a switch. I thought that was a little weird. Luckily, these types of tasks don't take long with 3D experience. With the change from our current vendor, Derby Pro Racer, I had to check what parts would be affected and verify that there wasn't anything else that our new vendor couldn't supply. The last thing we needed was a hiccup in our procurement process with these long lead items. The visualization showed that it was indeed just the wheel assemblies, which the new vendor, Extrudo Race Supply, would easily be able to provide. Now, we do try to track our vendor and manufacturing metadata closely, but sometimes, Eric, some of us forget. Eric. So, I made the change. Grouping the entire product structure by vendor makes it really easy to update all of the custom properties, too. And just to make sure I wasn't missing anything, a quick refresh shows the changes were made. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Now, my next task was to assign part numbers to all of these items. So I grouped my items with, with and without numbers and then just select the items with the missing part numbers. It's really easy to generate and assign all new part numbers. You know, I clearly remember that all of those went to a, a frozen state as well, at least until the final approvals could be done using our approval route. Come to think of it, there's no way a revision of the chassis can be made without going through our standard approval processes let me look at the revisions. Yeah, this is disturbing. All of these branches and additional revisions and a name change? I would remember that. This all looks really fishy to me. Where's my compare? Let's compare the revision that Eric was working on versus the released one. Hmm. Uh-oh, this doesn't, this doesn't make any sense. It's showing me as the owner and I can't even remember the last time I actually opened SolidWorks. No way I did this. All of the structural support in the front end has been completely undermined. Eric, this is below plan work. 
definitely not approved. No way. That's not how I would have modeled that at all. Oh, well, then uh, you wouldn't be opposed to showing us how you would model it then, would you? I just so happen to have a branch with my superior design right here. Now, I prefer to use structure systems instead of weldment. It's easier to use and update. Instead of 3D sketches, I use simple solid and surface geometry or even planes. You guys are all gonna love this. Setting up these planes was easy now that you can pattern planes and axes in 2025. Even better, you can now specify instances to vary as an offset from another instance rather than having to calculate the distance from the seed. That makes a lot more sense in this context. And look at how clean this feature tree is. I started with my base geometry and used that to create the frame. I added some gussets for strength and a brand new front end design. There's still some work left to do, but I think this is a solid start. Now, Mike, I know how much you love your properties. It seems obvious to me that these members are going to be cut on the bandsaw, but I'll add a property just for you. In SolidWorks 2025, I really don't mind since copying cut list properties to all items is now possible. This saves a ton of time. These sheet metal components aren't gonna be cut on the bandsaw though, so let's change that for these four items with a quick overwrite. You gotta give me mad props for that one, boss. This sheet metal part is almost complete, but I've been struggling to communicate my bend areas to the shop. Not anymore. With SolidWorks 2025, I can add bend notches to the flat pattern, so it's easy for them to line up the part in the press break. And don't worry, Andy, I've got something for you too. And it just so happens to be my favorite feature in 2025 so far, the ability to configure the structure's profiles. This makes it a snap to create different variants for your FEA analysis. You won't need to rappel down from Analysis Mountain to bother us lowly designers anymore. That is quite the speedy design work, Eric, but it's hard to tell just by looking if your new design is better or worse. Reynard, I got this. Move. Dude, there's no way that your design would have survived, and I can prove it. Let's see if it can withstand what we throw at it using SolidWorks simulation. I'll make this simple so even you can understand it. Notice how the structure system geometry automatically becomes a jointed beam model. Sweet! First, I'll add some fixtures where the wheels and suspension meet the frame. And now for the loading. Bro, these are high performance machines, so they need to withstand 5 G's of side loading when cornering. Boom! Now let's run this linear static analysis. <gasps> no way! That's even worse than I thought. Um, red is bad, Eric. Minimum factor safety is 0.6. That's a total failure, bro. Uh, well, oh, you're still not convinced, huh? Okay, cool. Well, let's see how this thing responds to harmonic loading. Well, to save time, I'll copy my study to a dynamic analysis. All my fixtures and connections go along for the ride. Sick. Now to add a base excitation. Rolling over gravel at high speed creates vibrations typically between 50 and 100 hertz. And now, in simulation 2025, I can specify those areas on the response spectrum. That means additional harmonic mode shapes right where I need them. Oh, well, look at that. It's galloping Gertie. <laughs> With that type of frame deflection, you'd lose all steering control. Hmm, that's interesting, since that's exactly why we crashed. But like, we were totally thrown from this car, bro. Uh, from the harmonic response, we get a pretty good idea about what would happen to us if we were riding in it. All of the chairs are connected to the floor with springs. To accurately represent them, I'll use the new abacus-powered orthotropic spring connector. With simulation 2025, not only can I control the axial stiffness, but also the directions of lateral, torsional, and bending stiffnesses as well. All right. And run. Wow. Your new frame turned our chairs into ejector seats, bro. I don't think I missed this result. The fundamental frequency, it corresponds exactly to my cornering speeds. What's going on here, Eric? Have you been spying on me at the track too? The frequency has to be a coincidence. I can't imagine that anyone is down at the go-kart track meticulously clocking each of Andy's lap times. Oh, 
I wouldn't be surprised if I did have a fan club, but uh, irregardless, whoever changed the frame, they're the ones who's responsible for sabotaging us and breaking my belay arm. Your arm is fine. And almost breaking my belay arm. It still hurts. Okay, let's circle back. Whoever made the change to the primary structure assembly and the frame, well, it's gotta be one of us. That change, as you call it, that's not at all what my feature tree looked like. It couldn't have been me. Uh, yes, but it is possible that you modeled it in such an amateur fashion so as to throw someone off of the trail. Well, you know, it definitely wasn't me. I'm much more of a mesh and run what I get kind of dude. You know, there's only two of us who have permissions to approve the final route stage to get it to released. Maybe we're overthinking this. Someone, not saying who, got ambitious in his light waiting and didn't rename his feature tree. Someone else released a new revision before who could it be could resolve the backlog of geometry changes. You know, Reynard, I think these are good lessons learned for the team as they get started on next year's car. <sighs> uh, Brenda, oh. a tempting conclusion that chalks this up as uh, overhead of a typical team, but frankly, I think this team deserves a lot more credit for how proficiently they use SolidWorks and 3D experience. <sighs> Does anyone need a bio break? Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. I think th there's something more nefarious afoot here, something that ties all this together. Ooh, all right. Great demos from the MVP Corp. Great demos, right? Well, I definitely know who did it. I mean, I think I know who did it. I maybe know who did it. I know tomorrow, after the next demos, I will definitely know who did it. Well, something tells me that I will find out when we conclude Splines Out here tomorrow afternoon. Well, that is it for general session for today, but that is not the end of our presentations. We're going to be learning more about the technologies shared this morning at three more sessions in Ballroom A. So at 10.45 a.m., you can learn more about the SOLIDWORKS updates you heard this morning and also learn some new ones at 1.15 p.m., have you been curious about what would happen if the Acme Corporation was real? Come by and find out, for that's a fun one. And at 2.45 p.m., you can hear from a panel of experts on trends in manufacturing, as well as updates on new solutions from Dumia and Dumia Works. Now, all these, again, are taking place in Ballroom A. You should know it is a little bit of a walk to Ballroom A. I think it's 0.25 miles, someone said. So you're going to get your steps in and blah, 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 on that one. So, so Plan, plan the time for that. Oh, and yes, it is Tuesday. You know what that means. Has anyone been to Gillies already? Yes, you've been here before. And for our newbies, who this is your first time in Dallas, you are in for an amazing treat. And I did hear there was a dance contest. So Manish and Suchit, I'm gonna hold you to that. We're ready for that. Now here's the thing that's important. In order to get in, you must have your badge. That is part of it. Please make sure you have your badge. The buses will be leaving downstairs in section DE at 645 and leaving every 15 minutes. Have an amazing time. We'll see you over in Hall A and I will see you tonight at Gillies. Bring your dancing shoes.